stuff. Oh my so God. I don't know. <laughs> Pam's going to let me know about the camera angle. I think you did good. So you guys, I had a lot of decisions to make. First things first, when you're decoupaging, there has never been a time I have not painted the back of my surface white. There may be times where it would be more appropriate to paint it another color depending on the effects that you want. But if you really want your paper to be bright, white is going to work the best. So if I would have done this black, it might be a good look, but all of this would just be so much more muted. I tried it on a light background and I didn't like it at all. Like no, very much yeah. it was the sky. My sky looks like it was getting ready to rain. It was really dark. Yeah. <laughs> it was a dark it and stormy dark story. Cloudy. Yes, it was. But then I knew I wanted the rest of my book to be black. So I painted all of it white. Actually, Pam did two coats. Then I just kind of marked where my paper was going to go. And before the live, I went in and I painted it in black velvet. I wanted it to be the more mellow of the black so yep. I didn't use a little black dress. Now, one of the things is I'm probably going to want to seal over the top of this. Oh, right now, before you, so you can wipe back paint yeah. or anything since you're going to blend. Wipe back anything, okay. yeah. So what? So I'm just using just like this half inch brush and some more black velvet. And I'm just gonna feather in where that edge is. And I'm gonna be bringing in texture, so it's like so not a big deal with this line. Looks like, and I'm also gonna be able to wipe back. So I'm just wiping back where I brought the paint in and blending it. Because this is rice paper, even though I sealed it, it's going to grab a little bit more than other papers would. Sealer, though. So this is the, the damask stencil, and I love it because if you look, it's so I don't know if they can see, this is totally perfect for like a book edge. The middle is perfect for freestanding elements if I wanted to something to come from the top or the bottom. Sorry, we're just gonna push this up just a little bit. Now it's not even probably, but. And we are also, going to add words. We're going to use a stamp and the alpha belly stamp with this too. So I'm focusing on this edge. If you can see, hopefully there's a straight edge right here Ooh, where I'm nice. going to be able to butt this right up to the edge of my book. And I'm only going to use certain elements. And I'm going to have to bring some in at the So what I'm thinking is I'm going to bring this element right here, just this little swooshy yes. in. And I could sacrifice the edge of that, but I'm going to try not Ooh. to. I'm going to try and, to hold that corner I'm going to try so it and hit hold the it. other one. What I'm going to need is, Tell where's my little scraper card? Uh-oh, I kept it. Do you want to just get some of the... Um, mm -hmm stuff on there for me. Yes, I do. So I'm going to take another piece of tape here. You only need a little bit right here. Just 
I just use my teeth, <laughs> which I do not recommend because I don't want any of that in the event that I didn't have good control, which is really possible. I'm just doing that. The rest of it I do want to show up. I not put enough on there? Um, I'm actually going to ask you to put it. So Pam's got it like this. Normally yeah, I would yeah. do that. Oh, you want it on the corner? I want it on the, yeah, the skinnier edge. Yep, this edge? Uh, no, this like, edge. Here. Yep, yep, yep. because <laughs> yep, I this see. That's me one-handed. I see the way you're going now. I see so where you're going. So it'll just fit in there better. Yep, yep, I see, I see. So I'm just going to get that. Gotcha. And the thinner I go on it, the faster it's going to dry. Yes, that's what you're worried about too much. All these different fun elements. That's what's hard about the lives. There's so many things we talk about that we want to do, but you just can't. You can't. When I'm doing these narrower elements. I just kind of roll it into a thin line. And then because it has the micro rim, makes it really easy to clean it off. The new molds are coming now with weights on them. So when you when you are using this in this element right here, it's gonna say right on there like three grams. So you know that you need three grams of clay, but it's also gonna say volume on them for those of you who like to use resin. So you're gonna know exactly how much resin to mix, which I think is so cool, so that you don't have all that waste. And that, the little end came off, which is not all that unusual. So you just plop it over and roll it back. The fact that that end came off, I can just glue that right on where I want it to go. Let's talk about the book and what I did since you guys saw me last. So I added using trimmings to Oh, uh -huh. so whichever trimmings I have in stock, the other one's on the way. So it was thin enough for the spine of this book. And then I painted it white and sealed it. No, I'm lying. I didn't. I just painted it black and sealed it. Then on the front, I've got this element that I added with the clay from Lock and Key. This is what was pulled through the Jamie Ray Vintage Damask Stencil. That has been painted white and sealed. And everything's been sealed again. So, now I'm going to go back in with the black velvet that I've been using. And I'm going to paint over everything that's white. In some pieces, um, some areas, I'm going to be a little bit more careful because I don't want it to get smeared all over my rice paper, even though with the sealer I know it'll cover well. So I'm just using a number six round brush. And I'm gonna cover this whole thing. The reason I sealed is so that I can pull back. So that. She was upside down. So if I don't dry it before I go in with the baby wipe, it'll just kind of smear and look more like a wash, which is not what I want it to do. So I just want hints of that texture to come through. Oh, no, that's from yesterday. Hmm. Oh, you're trying to pull it up? Yeah. I'm like, wait, there's not tape all over that. I just love texture.
for the deep, yeah. deep So I'm hole. just going to work out of the lid here, and we're going to do this part first. We didn't put our side lights on. Well, no, you were with Paula. Whoa, you can get a tan from those side <laughs> lights, those puppies. Uh, is it too bright for you when you're leaning down like that? Um, I'm not really looking into it. It probably would be if I were to. What's nice with the raised stencil, you like, it gives you a nice outline to be able to paint in. Beautiful. Hey, Judy. Yeah, let me try to refresh this and see if this little sucker comes up. Um, the other thing that's really cool to do, and I was tempted to just ask Pam to hand it to me, but what? I'm not sure I'm ready to do that yet, what? is to um, drip this. I did it on, you know, my other books the oh, multicolored ones. You did? Well, but I did um, Golden Ticket, which I kind of know the, the window of opportunity you know, to be able to do that. You've with it before. Right, this one I don't know as well. Oh, I'd be afraid then. Yeah, I've you're never. Not afraid, but you'll be mad if you. Uh, ruin the whole thing? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, and run the metallic right along the edge of the book and it became pretty crunchy paint. I want you to be able to see it so I'm kind of like brushing it a little bit toward me. Oh, are you doing the edges in the gold? Yeah. I like it. I like it. I can't even see it. Makes, makes a few of us okay. So I just re-dipped it. Just running it along that edge. I think it's, it's like an educational book. So I'm taking this and I'm kind of masking because I want to get this whole edge painted gold. And these are the things that you figure out once you start going. So I'm just dropping that in there. And I know we got to get ready for a workshop, so I should be wrapping up here. I so I like that better. Okay. And I got to think about, oh, this is, um, okay. It has, there we go, this will work. So I'm just sanding, pull some of that white through. Are you going to decoupage inside the book for story pages? So here's the deal with that. You could, and I, I literally mean you, <laughs> um, it is so time consuming. So to really do that, you have to go in and, in, in my opinion, 
you would need to go in and you use um, gel medium and combine two or three pages so they're thick pages like parchment. So this is um, black chiffon glaze, and it's going to tone everything down. And it kind of works to antique as well. I've got this sealed, so I don't have to worry a whole lot. It's a um, it's a pretty translucent black glaze, which I like because black glazes can really, really grab. And then I'll go in with a baby wipe and clean that all up. I do love a glaze. Good glaze now and then. And I can do the same thing on the spine. And then when I seal it, it's really going to be pretty. So I'm not going to I'm not going to use the typesetting letters just because I said I was going to like that would be silly. I have to make sure that that's what's going to look best with this and I'm just not ready to make that decision right now so I'm just putting the black glaze around uh, the edge too. Black gate glaze over the gold is amazing. So here we go and I'm not sure what the view's like. They can see it perfect. See I can still do more than one thing at a time. I was questioning myself earlier. And the black glaze is a glaze, so in other words, there's sealer in it. So it's going to brighten this mm -hmm. paint up as well. Lisa, look how pretty in here. See what you're doing? Oh, it's beautiful. And I just don't know. I love Once Upon a Time, and Once Upon a Time is going to go on here. I'm just not positive that using the Alpha Belly is what I want to do. So I need to think about it. But that just made all the difference in the world. And I'll show you what this is. It's another paint couture product. And it is called Glaze Couture. And it comes in a few different colors. And this one's black chiffon. Is what get this done for you guys. Okay, so we're, we're just going to start. So I'm using the type setting letters, and I've got the, I used the um, capital O, and then the lowercase n, c, and e. Now normally I would use a brayer with paints, but when I'm doing something little like this, you guys, I just used a Nero foam brush. And I just do it that way. So um, opening your paint over your project is not a great idea. But I got it off to the side here. Okay, so there's my gold paint. I'm going to just dip my foam brush in here. Now the downside is metallics dry really quickly. So, um, and I may need more. I want to make sure, so I just kind of drag it, drag it across the top. And I want a decent impression. So, um, you know, a brayer would be not a bad idea.
So I'm going to get it on there, and I'm trying not to drip in the center. So I'm going to get it on there, and then I'm just going to get it wet again in case it's dried. And i got to work fast. So I'm going to line this up and hope I get it straight. And I'm going to press it down. I'm just going to try not to shift here. So I'm going to use the Jamie Bray Vintage Mini Farmhouse Stencil. Need to make sure that that's dry. And then I love this. So I'm going to have to slide this down because I need... And it's cool because it actually lines up with the bottom of the O. So I'm going to... Hopefully that's straight. I'm going to hold this up just for a second. I'm going uphill just a little bit. And I'm going to use this as my edge. That'll be good right there. For my stencil. Okay, so I need to clear my work surface here. So I'm going to go, I want to go line it up with the bottom of the O and even with the N. So I'm using my same metallic paint. And it'll probably need two coats. Gorgeous as is. Thank you. I really, oh, thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Dorothy. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And this is going to be a different um, look because I'm going on a lighter background and I'm stenciling. So it's not going to have that same ripply kind of look. And I am not a patient stenciler at all. But it was really important to me to line it up in the ways that I talked about. Even with the O, and then it's even with the N over there. And it bled a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to take a baby wipe and wipe off. Um, the paint kind of soon after because the metallic dries so quickly. Okay. Now I'm going to do the O. Would you believe? I don't know. I can't find. Where could my brush have gone? Here it is. Okay. So, there's my O. Just try and go up and down. Some people swirl. I go up and down most of the time so that my bristles don't scoot underneath the transfer, or the stencil, I should say. So what I'm thinking is I want to do time in the same font that I did once, but I'm not positive I'm going to like that. So that's what I kind of am waiting to make that decision. And I probably have more paint on here than I should. One of the other things that I like to do is take a fine brush 
and connect where those spaces are. So I'm going to take, I've got a fine paintbrush. I'm going right into my gold paint and the P has a space at the top right there. So I'm just going to close that off. And then same thing with the O. And Pam, Pam uses, she'll take one of these brushes. Let me try that. She cuts all of the bristles off. And then she just dabs it in there. Because I don't want it, I don't want it to look like it was a stencil. You know, I want it to look like, and those are going to, um, I want to at least get off a majority of the metallic. Now I need to do the letter A, and I've got to think about where I want that with respect to the rest. Um, and I, I could have easily... I mean, I could fit upon a time right there. I think it. I think it'd be tight, though. I'm just gonna go with my first instinct. So I'm just gonna place this. And the A is kind of tricky to connect. So when I do that, it's trickier because you've got this part right here and then this right here. That looks good. So the decision I have to make is, do I use these same letters for time down at the bottom? Or do I go back and use, I want to pull this off. And this is my rice paper has been sealed, so I really don't have to worry about it. I think that's what I'm going to like. I could do the stencil, but I think I like this better. So I'm going to go with this, bring it down in the blue sky part. Here? All right, let's get this. Let's get this situated. Isn't it where you just want to be here and like take it from me and go like, no, put it here. I'm such a hands-on person. All right, let's see. All right, so we got it here. I don't think that looks good. Okay, that's where it needs, that's what I'm doing, you guys. I'm putting it there. It is not the end of the world because I can always add more flourishes from the, um, stencil that I used. So normally, I would use a brayer. Okay, I have all of this wet. Fingers crossed. I'm sliding this up so that I have that eyes gotta go. I was just gonna say between the horse's paws, between the horse's hooves, we're doing it. We're just doing it. My biggest thing is if it's crooked. I hate that. All right. Oh, that's cool. Let me clean these off real quick so that I don't 
I don't want the metallic to kind of soak into my stamps. And it's wanting to go over the top of my raised stencil and I need it to go more in the middle. And then I'm going to go over. I love the distress too. I thought maybe they were just going to introduce a double stamp set that had all different kinds of texture. Apparently I was wrong because then they unretired. So I'm just gonna lightly, just lightly hit it in different spots just for a hint of crackle. And this is really pretty dry, but it looks kind of cool. Let's see if I can get it in there. Nope. I need to get. That's really juicy, so I'm going to have to be careful. go over my metallic letters to tone me down a little bit. Keep in mind that the base of my book is sealed. So here's my black chiffon glaze. And I need to have a baby wipe handy, which is right here. And the alpha bellies would have looked really cool. but it would have really fought with my texture medium. So this is just black chiffon glaze. And I'm just toning that down just a little bit. And it's dry because the metallic dries so quickly. Just pulling that back. Um, I'm not going to do a, yeah, maybe I am. Let's see. What the heck? See what happens here. Just do the O. Or the, the O, the U. Oh, that worked. That worked good. And it's because I have the rice paper sealed. That's why I'm able to get away with this. And it's darkening that area up a little bit, which I which I like too, the rice paper. I like that. Okay, so now we're down here. Getting some black glaze on here. And it, it's all about the layering. Watch his little feet. And I'm gonna, right here where I got the crackle a little bit. Boy, I wish you could see how good this looks. Just the glaze over the metallic. And then when I seal it, it's going to make all of this pop too. So keep in mind that sealer under... Over your paper under these decorative type things is what makes it so that you can pull stuff back. Let me 
me see here, just this. I think I need to get the corner of this up here. I may have gotten it already. Just makes it so much richer. What one do I want here? I'm so picky about my brushes that I use. Let's try this. We'll see here. See, this is really going to make it a little too solid, I think. I'm going to try and pull it straight up. And that worked okay. How's that? Just the left side stem. Well, I think that that improved it. Um, a little afraid to keep going here, but I have never tried this before. So this is just a wider brush, and I'm using that stamp as an outline. And because I don't want it too intense, I'm pulling up with a baby wipe. And I'm lucky that this did not smear all over the place because that absolutely could have happened. All right, I'm going to take some, so you guys are saying leave as is, but here's what I'm going to show you because it's bothering me. So if you look, I'm going to pull it in so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm intentionally going off to the side here. I want you to see right here. Perfect walkway. All right, see right there? That's too much crackle for me. I'm going to just take my finger and my black velvet paint, and I'm just going to tone that down a little bit. And now you get a hint of crackle without it being so bright because crackle really, you know, the mediums in your surface literally cracking. So they, they wouldn't be bright gold. But the glaze isn't intense enough to do what I want it to do. So that's why I'm back in with my paint. And I may be off screen if I am, I apologize. Let me just get that in there. And just tone it down a little. When I seal it, it's gonna pop back, you know, a little bit's gonna pop back. There we go. Hopefully you can appreciate why I did that. Let me see where you guys are at now. And where I just added it, it looks really milky and gross for right now. I'm going to take my favorite sealer and I'm just going to seal over everything I just did. That metallic dries so fast. And it looks like I'm going in different directions, but I totally, I even it all out. 
and this dries really pretty quickly. This is probably the third time this is getting sealed. So once I get it all on there, it's just top to bottom. And then I just got to remember to hammer all of these closed. Ugh, what a mess. All right, I'm going to bring my blow dryer here and speed this along a little bit so you guys can see it. This really wasn't as long as a project, like it took me three days, but it's because of dry time. It really wasn't that long of a project. So I'll hold it up as soon as it's dry here. And I think that that worked out really pretty well. And then this is what's on the spine and I'm in the middle there it's kind of black I may take my gold on my finger and finger paint but 